Greetings. Welcome to the Dingleberry Farm Homestead. Today I'm going to talk about the effectiveness of a old Japanese process called uh, yakasugi or shao sugiban, which is the process of uh, charring wood and then coating it with some sort of oil, uh, primarily to protect the wood and in many other instances to make it aesthetically pleasing. It's a 19th century process that uh, started in Japan, as far as we know. And there are temples and buildings that are supposedly one, hundreds of years old that have been um, protected with this method that are still standing today. So um, there's lots of uh, uh, evidence that you can read on the internet that, that says that it's a very effective process. Um, here in the United States, uh, the old timers uh, sort of morphed that concept into um, using the materials that they had on hand, uh, uh, protection for their barns, their pole barns, their posts in the ground, um, you know, any number of reasons that you might want to put wood in the ground and want it to last more than six months or a year. Um, the materials on hand were often things like used motor oil from changing the oil on the tractors or farm equipment and diesel fuel, which was, again, prevalent uh, on most farms. Um, the uh, internet and YouTube are full of videos of people using uh, yakasugi or shaosugi ban. I'm going to use yakasugi as the preferred term here. Uh, they're supposed to be pretty much interchangeable. Um, the um, videos that I saw were uh, people using it for uh, pre preservation, which is what I was interested in, but there are a lot of people who do it for aesthetics. Uh, for aesthetic purposes, they typically don't char the wood quite as much. And they wouldn't use motor oil to protect it. They would use tongue oil or, you know, some other type of woodworking oil. Um, my interest, obviously, for um, my homestead was to protect the wood. Uh, behind me, you see the remnants of uh, what was going to be my sawmill shed. About a year and a half ago, I bought a wood miser sawmill. And in preparation for it to arrive, uh, I started uh, building what you see behind me. Uh, basically, the back wall is three vertical posts and one cross member, which was going to be the back of the shed. There would, be, would have been one in the front, obviously with some sort of a roof to protect me from the elements. Uh, the posts you see in the ground were to level out the mill. I didn't want the mill sitting directly on the ground. And because the ground is sloped, uh, I didn't think that I would able, be able to use uh, beams. So I cut a, 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 probably a dozen, whatever it was, uh, logs in the round um, usually five, six, seven feet long, um, debarked them, uh, burned them with a propane torch, and then coated them with a 50-50 mixture of diesel fuel and motor oil. Uh, I then buried them three feet in the ground and then cut the tops off uh, level and then retreated the tops where I cut the wood. Um, you can probably see a couple of um, pressure-treated pieces of wood. That was actually to make it easier for me to uh, screw uh, the, the mill down to the logs because the end of the log is um, not horizontal grain, it's the end grain. Uh, screws don't stick into it very well, so that's why the uh, pressure treated wood exists. But I used it for something close to a year before I decided I was going to move it to a, another location on the property. Uh, it'll be another video, but I've got a uh, a sawmill shed set up with a roof. Uh, it's probably 90, 95% complete, but I've been using it in its new location for at least four or five months. Um, so this wood was put in the ground about a year and a half ago. Um, I was curious as to whether or not uh, it, the process of the uh, Yakasugi protected the wood. Um, it, I don't understand it's only a year and a half, but it is what it is. So I looked on the internet to see if I could find any videos or in information on, on the effectiveness of it. And, and I really didn't see anything that, that was on point. So I thought I'd make a video and uh, let you guys see what my experiences are. So I'm gonna pull these logs out of the ground. I was going to anyway, because I needed to clean up this area. And then I'm gonna use a variety of tools to cut into them crosswise, lengthwise, whatever, to see if the, in the year and a half that they've been in the ground, whether or not it was effective. Um, I don't know if you can see the middle post is actually where most of the sawdust from the mill accumulated. So in addition to being in the ground in dirt, um, the, that log in particular was usually um, about a foot deep in 
uh, sawdust, which spends most of its time damp, obviously being outside and exposed to the rain. So again, I'm gonna see if the uh, materials that I put in the ground a year and a half ago uh, seem to be effectively treated with the Yakasugi method. So next video or next segment of this will be, um, I think I'll do probably just some little segments of me pulling the wood out of the ground. So the next time you hear me talk will probably be when I'm actually cutting it. So this is the log on the left-hand side of the mill that I've pulled up. I guess my recollection of bearing it three feet is off by about a foot and a half, but uh, I definitely charred it about four foot up. <clears throat> so the first test I guess I'm gonna do is the funk test. So I'm just gonna hit it with a hammer up here above the ground level. which sounds solid. All right, well, that's that. Let me put it on the mill and uh, slice some of it off and see what it looks like. Okay, we're loaded up on the Woodmiser LT15 start and it appears this end of the log is about nine and a half inches. So I'm gonna to try to take it about as thin a slice as I can. Well, the wood looks pretty good. And this little sliver right here that I cut off is still pliable. I can bend it without it breaking. All right, so I cut a thin cookie off the top. And sound solid. Well, there you have it. This amateur scientist has determined that the Yukisugi process worked, at least on the lower four feet of my logs. Uh, the ones in the ground were protected in their entirety. The ones that were going to be the back and the front, because there was going to be a roof on there, I did not protect the upper portion of the log. And when I cut into that one, I could tell the top had not, while not rotted, you could tell that it had started to dry out uh, and deteriorate a little bit. Um, the new mill, all the logs were milled on the log, on the sawmill, and were protected all four sides and both ends. Um, so hopefully I will get full protection for years. I doubt if I'll be here for centuries. Um, but uh, if you like the video, please, um, like it and subscribe. Uh, this was my first video. I plan on making a few other ones. I've got several projects around the homestead. I mentioned the um, sawmill shed. Uh, I've built a solar kiln. Uh, we've got a chicken coop, a pig pen, all made with wood here from the homestead. Again, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.